Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and stay tuned by clicking the bell icon. 8 Ways Bridgerton Already Set Up Benedict's Love Story After Season 3 Bridgerton Season 3 might center around Colin and Penelope, but its previous seasons 1 and 2 dropped many hints about Benedict's journey. Had it followed the book series order, Bridgerton Season 3 should have been about the second-born Benedict, the eldest among the Bridgerton siblings still unmarried after Anthony's successful marriage to Kate. His novel An Offer from a Gentleman detailed the tortuous adventure not just to find love, but to keep it in his life, as the third Bridgerton novel proved among the most action-packed in the series, especially considering the difficult situation Violet and Benedict find themselves in to defend the honor of Benedict's love interest. Still, even with the Netflix period drama changing the book series order, Bridgerton seasons 1 and 2 hinted at small changes Benedict seemingly goes through that would greatly alter his perspective on life as he knew it. Indeed, although there was still no love interest in sight for whom Benedict remotely considered marriage, as the third Bridgerton book's beginning briefly hinted at, Benedict's personal journey with his artistic pursuits and the contempt he holds for the ton brought him closer to this version of the character in an offer from a gentleman. Bridgerton Season 3 would need to continue in this direction, especially if Benedict's story is next. Alois and Benedict's talk in Bridgerton S1 inspired him to discard the tome. While sharing his true feelings about Sir Granville's painting put the idea that artistic pursuits were accepted within the ton in Benedict's head, Alois's talk with him made Benedict actively pursue art. Alois challenging the burning of his sketches reminded Benedict of the different positions he and his sister hold, namely that whatever he chose to focus on he could have studied it, while Alois's would have had to be stealthy to pursue writing as a woman, but also of the chance he had having met Sir Granville in Bridgerton Season 1, Episode 3. Their talk also prompted Benedict's search for a different way to live within the Tom's boundaries. However, it's not within the Tom's boundaries Benedict finds love in the books. Indeed, an offer from a gentleman has Benedict meet his love interest Sophie without knowing anything about her at a Bridgerton masquerade ball. However, the second time he meets her, Benedict is far from London and Sophie is a maid at the house whose party Benedict attends. Because he fell for Sophie two years prior, Benedict stopped looking for a wife, but her not being out in society due to being the Earl of Penwood's illegitimate daughter meant Benedict could have never seen Sophie again, prompting a challenge the other Bridgerton siblings never had to face. Sir Granville showed Benedict the second-born's lifestyle he'll choose. Benedict only admitted openly his passion for painting and worked towards becoming a better artist because Sir Granville showed him he could pursue art and live by different rules even while attending society's functions. While an offer from a gentleman highlights a different lifestyle for Benedict from Granville's as there are fewer parties and Benedict favors living far from London at his cottage where he can also paint more easily, Granville still introduced Benedict to the freedoms he could enjoy because he wasn't the firstborn as early as Bridgerton season one. This could make Bridgerton season three continue to hint at Benedict's place outside the ton, especially considering Sophie's lineage. Benedict's love interest can dissipate his artistic obstacles. Bridgerton Season 2 ended with Benedict leaving the royal schools after learning that Anthony had essentially bought his place into the academy, and the news hit him because he always doubted his talent. However, Sophie sees him as more than just a Bridgerton in an offer from a gentleman, and she is the only person to whom he shows his sketches in the books. Bridgerton Seasons 1 and 2 set up Benedict's self-doubt about his art, and this is true also in the books. However, whenever Sophie appears after Bridgerton Season 3, she can surely help Benedict regain confidence in his artistic talents, just like she does in the book. Sir Granville's challenge in Season 1 already predicted Benedict's future. Sir Granville and Benedict's heart-to-heart -heart in Bridgerton Season 1, Episode 7 entailed a challenge from Sir Granville to live outside the traditional expectations of society which Weatherby and Sir and Lady Granville did, whereas all Benedict did was talk about doing so. Refusing to marry before Sophie and marrying a maid by marrying Sophie means he doesn't challenge the ton in the Bridgerton books, but he still lives outside polite society, spending most of his time at his countryside residence because of his love match with an Earl's illegitimate daughter like Sophie. Benedict's choice pales in comparison to Granville's arrangement with his wife and Weatherby, but it still removes him and Sophie from the ton's functions. Will Montrich's club only raised Benedict's interest in those outside the ton? 
Benedict was among the first going to Will Montrich's club in Bridgerton season two, and when he did, he expressed his wholehearted support for someone who worked his way up in the world, as Montrich did. While being accepted into the academy right after spending time at Aubrey Hall meant Benedict spent the rest of the season between the Bridgerton residence and the academy, his admiration for Mondrich's work is another hint for whenever his story is adapted in a season after Bridgerton season three. Indeed, despite being the Earl of Penwood's daughter, Sophie spent most of her time working, even exploited when she worked for the Earl's new wife. When Benedict meets Sophie in an offer from a gentleman, he finds her at the Cavender's service as a maid. While Benedict and Alois already hold in higher esteem some members of the working class more than the tons in Bridgerton seasons 1 and 2, Benedict's admiration for Mondrich's venture can help him see Sophie's perspective whenever he falls for her. A big storyline in an offer from a gentleman has Sophie categorically refused to be Benedict's mistress because of her past. Benedict's already present respect for those who work for a living teases that he is closer to understanding Sophie whenever he meets her after Bridgerton season 3. Benedict's anxiety about the Academy-proved art mattered more than the ton. An offer from a gentleman's beginning sees Benedict deeply irritated with the tendency of the ton's members to refer to him as Bridgerton No. 2. In the book, Benedict is aware of people not seeing him as more than just a Bridgerton, and one of the biggest reasons he is drawn to Sophie is her figuring him out and seeing what makes him Benedict. His choice to leave the Academy in Bridgerton season to his ending highlights how he didn't just want to be there, but also prove himself as an artist. This is a huge tease of a central storyline from his book, as proving himself through his passion is what Benedict wants. Anthony's duty reminded Benedict he didn't make the most of his interests. Anthony and Aguina's wedding failure hurt the Bridgerton eldest because it reminded Anthony he didn't perform his duty, but it also hurt Benedict. Anthony challenged Benedict by reminding him that his being the second-born only made him second in his duties towards his family, but it also simultaneously reminded Benedict that he wasn't using his freedom to make the most of the Academy's teachings. This, along with the newfound knowledge that Anthony made a donation and only then the Academy offered a place to Benedict, made him doubt his artistic pursuits, highlighting once more the setup for Benedict's future struggle with confidence in his talent after Bridgerton Season 3. Benedict always supported his family, but they didn't believe in his art. Whether by helping Anthony see that his obsession with his duty was hurting him in Bridgerton Season 2, or by expressing his support for Eloise, no matter if she was or not behind Lady Whistledown in Bridgerton Season 1, Benedict always supported his family. However, he felt that Anthony's donation to the Academy meant his brother didn't believe in his talent and that he didn't really earn the place to be there, making his art unworthy of the place. Although it's unknown when Bridgerton will tell Benedict's story, this is the biggest tease setting it up, as it will undoubtedly tackle his lack of confidence in his art. If you like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and share.